I know a lot of people are thinking I'm only doing this for views since I'm only a small channel or that I'm jumping on a bandwagon but to be honest you can make that excuse for every video since everyone's on the internet to gain attention. And I've been wanting to talk about this for a while now since the context behind it do not make me happy. Make no mistake, this video isn't just a call out, it's also a warning. I do want people to know that this isn't my usual content that I usually put out and there are some really serious things that I will be talking about. But if you are interested to just hear my thoughts then please stick around. I do also want people to know that this isn't a beat for beat video, this is only a viewer's output. I might not have the full story but I'm not deliberately trying to leave anything out. So if anyone wants to correct me in the comment sections feel free to leave a comment. Anyway here we go. For those of you who don't know who Rebecca Starlight aka Star Giant Productions is, she's an animated reviewer as well as a former editor from Mr. Enter, and so far has been the only editor that Mr. Enter has publicly fired. And if Mr. Enter thinks you're a bad editor, then that's saying a lot. Having said that, doing my own research on our content, it isn't very good. By making stupid and unnecessary points... I've just been informed that cartoons don't have the right to vote! Well, yeah. Cartoons aren't real people. It'd be great to have a stunt double for all the cartoon violence. But cartoon characters don't need stunt doubles. That's the fucking point! Making pointless tantrums. Why did John not just tell me that I'm fired and kicked off his team? That's a very good question. To this day, I can't give you an answer. That's because I don't know! Awkward dialogue. And that was the Proud Family's attempt at cancel culture. It was a complete garbage mess. It was a complete garbage mess. Adding in really bad text screens, and you guessed it, bad at editing. My wife made fun of Mr. Enter before on this channel, and I still stand when I say Mr. Enter's content isn't for me. However, we're talking about Rebecca here. As I've mentioned before, she's the only editor that Mr. Enter had to fire. Not just because of her bad editing, but also the way that she's treated her co-workers, as well as being a bad boss in general. Mr. Enter has made a video regarding Rebecca and how she was working for him, so if you want to watch that for context, I'll link that in the description below. But long story short, she doesn't seem like the best person to be around or to be friends with. For some reason, she likes to put herself as Mr. Enter's best editor. I was John's best editor. The only other editor that was as good as me was Crimson Mayhem. Which is hilarious because he's admitted to saying that Rebecca was one of his worst editors. Rebecca was my worst editor and two, being the only editor he's had to fire. Up until this day, she still claims that she's his best editor. And if you feel the need to say you're the best at something, then your ego is probably on the level of the Eiffel Tower. From the video's release, Rebecca planned on making a video addressing Mr. Enter, accusing him of abuse. She made a video titled Addressing My Abuse, which she has since privated but has recently been archived by another YouTuber. Shout out to this guy. Titled Addressing My Narcissism. But I like to call it... Where? Now, I think responding to people who make videos about you is a pretty bad idea. Whenever someone makes a video like this, it just feels desperate, like they want to be liked or appreciated that the internet has decided not to give to them. The thing is, when you're on the internet, you're gonna find people who like or dislike you. That's just the nature of it. And making videos like this isn't going to help. In some cases, if people are taking things out of context or making false slash criminal accusations about you, then it's understandable. But if it's just a random person just making a negative video about you, that's pretty petty. But going back on subject, the video is about three hours long and it is the most painful sit through I've ever seen from a YouTuber. Most of Rebecca's marks are just her replying to enter by saying, no I didn't you liar. And despite us repeatedly telling her what her issues were, it still seems that Rebecca needs an extra clue. You did not tell me anything that happened. I was as shocked as everyone else in the world when this video came up because I was blocked. Let's keep going on the points. Many of the videos that she edited have no background music. The most notable exception is the solo review in which she uses the exact 30 second loop of a song for 30 minutes until the credits where she blasts another song 20 times louder than the rest of the video. Objection! That is a 100% lie. There are so many unconvincing lies in this video, I was just waiting for Rebecca to make the I don't sweat statement. 
as well as making counter arguments that have absolutely nothing to do with what Mr. Enter said. The backgrounds of the avatars frequently changed for no reason. Because none of these things were mentioned in the trailer. The only concrete thing that was mentioned... Which is weird because we gave her avatars that were detached from the backgrounds. The proof of this is right here in this High Guardian Spice video, in which the avatar is hovering above the bottom of the video for no apparent reason. If you're complaining about that, John, <laughs> wait, until, <laughs> wait until you get to High Guardian Spice where Rosemary being animated is just her shaking side to side. Now stop by my office if you have any questions. But I think I know where John's getting at with this criticism. This is Vivian from Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Why am I showing you an image of her in this serious video? It's because the logic that she follows is what John wanted me to do with his OC. In the game, she is a Shadow Siren, a creature that can't leave the ground. So, do you know what the game does when Mario goes high or a higher level of flooring in the game? They have her have a long tail so that she is always tied to the ground. And even going so far to getting her friends to talk about what a great person Rebecca is. I remember the day I first met Rebecca. I was scrolling through YouTube looking for something to watch when I caught one of her Cartoon Network 64 videos. It was either Dexter's Laboratory or Cow and Chicken, I can't remember which, but her review video really caught my attention. So I started watching more and more of her videos and interacting in the live stream chat. Then I noticed that she had a Discord group, and so I joined, messaged her, and from there, me and Rebecca became great friends. Working with Rebecca has had many ups and downs, especially as of late with all the controversies and drama going on. Now don't get me wrong, I like working with Rebecca, especially with all the friends I've made along the way that I've come to view as family. Hey everyone, this is Jackson. I'm Rebecca's best friend. We've known each other since 2016 through DeviantArt, but we didn't meet each other in person until 2017. For six years, we've been hanging out almost every single day since we lived close by. We both really love cartoons. Now I'm not going to go over the entire video since, like I said, it's three hours long and I've got more important things to do with my time. But there is one point in the video that I do want to address, and it's this point right here. I don't know anything present about Necropan, so people saying that I had a pedophile in my server knowingly for 8 months are all liars. I know a lot of people already know about this whole situation, but if you don't, I highly recommend you go and check out the live call with Rosa Ray Ramsey on Techno's channel, as well as the call with Lyle Convoy and the 4 hour Senate call for context. Links to those videos will be in the description, but here's the deal. Rebecca had a Discord server, which is most likely filled with children. Another individual that was in that server was someone who went by the name of Necropon, who was later exposed as a child predator. Another person that was in that server was someone who went by the name of Rosa Ray Ramsey, who was so proud to be Rebecca's friend because she's part of the LGBT. I'm Rosa Ray Ramsey, and let's just say I am a friend of... Rebecca Starlight, I've joined her click recently since I mostly haven't had any friends that are LGBT, so this is why I've joined her, I've joined her. This is why I'm a part of her company. Techno, who was the host of this call, had both Rosa and Lyle Convoy in it because Rosa wanted Tech to make a video on a certain someone. Techno has a series on this channel called Internet Horrors, which is a documentary series talking about criminals, abusers, or anything that would make you a horrible or immoral human being. Techno doesn't just put the random dick on this channel because being a dick isn't really a crime, which Tech made very, very clear to Rosa, but as you can tell, Rosa isn't really the brightest person in the room. Or another example, let's look at Lily Orchard. I put her on there because, generally speaking, even though there's a lot of things I talked about from her past, she's doing a lot of things now that are making it seem like she's very much a, just a bad person to be around because she's very toxic. She's abusive towards a lot of people. Miss Anthropony has done, right. Miss Anthropony, in a sense, hasn't even talked to him right now. I even just talked to him in the, dis, in the, in the Discord. He doesn't really 
he, he tends to do a lot of things that can be a little bit annoying. He can be a little bit a little bit obnoxious. He tends to call out a lot of things that people do that he will sometimes do himself. But that's not really internet horrors. That's him doing anything illegal, shady, or narcissistic. That's just, okay, he has his problems. That's it. But this would just get even worse. Because in this call, it was revealed that Rebecca and Rosa kept Nekapon on their server after finding out the truth and was given evidence about Nekapon for four days. It wasn't long before we eventually dis it wasn't long before we eventually discovered what Nekapon was doing was wrong, and then eventually we kicked her out. Eventually. You eventually kicked her out. How long between finding out the information and removing her was it? Well, let's just say Stop Oh my god, can you start well, a sentence without saying let's just say eventually. I'm going to lose it on you. I'm going to lose it on you. How long? Give me days, hours, weeks. What is it? I'm going to say, like, um, uh, I lost track. It's been, like, a long... Was it days? Probably. It took you but... days to remove a child predator when you knew... I think it did. was, like... It took you days? Probably. Days? Days?! It should have taken you five like days. seconds! It was probably like four, day four days. days like four days between finding out someone in your server is a child predator and removing them. Out. Are you stupid? But then this would turn out to be a lie. Because it wasn't four days. It was a lot longer than that. You might be thinking, was it five days? Was it a week? Was it two weeks? Eight months. They knowing and willingly kept a child predator in their server, most likely filled with children, for nearly a year. The thing with Star Giant is she has a severe lack of priorities. Last year, she had somebody in her server by the name of Nekopon. She was told was a child predator and was given evidence was a child predator. And her response to it was to do nothing and instead obsess over some other random user that lied about them them being Star Giant Productions. So this child predator stayed in her server for eight months. Eight months this child predator stayed in Star Giant Productions server, which I can almost promise you is primarily children. Rosa also got into call with the Senate, which one of Nekopon's victims was also in the call. Sitting down and talking to Rosa about what she went through, with Rosa showing no sympathy or regret about what she allowed. Rosa only really cared about her own image and how this would affect her. And do you know where Rebecca was through this whole thing? Nowhere! She didn't get in call once, she never answered for her own actions or anything. She just allowed her friend to be stamped on by everyone and never once defended her own actions. And how does she address this? She's part of some drama, accused of grooming. That is all that I know about her. Did she actually do this? I don't know. I really don't. You pathetic piece of shit. You put children in danger by having her around. And then you have the nerve to lie and say that you didn't know when you were told beforehand. And according to Rosa, you were more focused on another user lying to you. I didn't know about... Me and my friend Rebecca didn't know about what Nekopan was doing behind our backs because we had to deal with someone else who was who was lying. First of all, why did that take you eight months to deal with? Second, if you didn't know, then why did you tweet an apology to Neko's victims? And thirdly, why was that more important than dealing with a child predator on your server? I apologize for not staying as calm as I usually am, but given the information that you have shown and accusing Enter of doing something that you are no better of is honestly disgusting to me. Under these circumstances, I do not feel any sympathy for Rebecca. I do not feel sorry for her. I do not envy her. If you cared so much about your reputation, I recommend doing two things. One, either take some time off the internet and focus more on your own life, or two, get in call with Lyle Convoy and talk this out. Whether or not this will help you is in God's hands, but this is some really serious stuff that cannot just be shrugged off or forgotten about just because it was a year ago. I know you made a video addressing your video, and to be honest, it's less of you admitting to your mistakes and more about you blaming other people. I know you apologise for the Nekapon thing, but your story has gone back and forward so much, I don't really believe you. And I'm not going to speak on behalf of everyone, including the victims, but it's going to take a lot more than just an apology for you to win people's trust. To the rest of you watching, 
Don't harass or send death threats to Rebecca or anyone close to her. Rebecca's actions are immoral and they deserve to be called out on and if you want to do this by making a video or leaving a comment then go right ahead, I'm not going to stop you. But harassment or death threats are never acceptable or the answer of how to deal with a situation. But if you're here till the end of the video, I thank you for watching and make sure you keep yourself safe.